Good morning, folks. We've got space, magnetic excursions, NOVA events, climate reports, and more today, but we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We find that the last day brings the southern coronal hole further through, numerous bright active regions, and the first glimpse of the coronal hole on the north coming in. These active regions have been building in number the last week, still have a ways of development to go before making the bigger solar flares, but this is how it progresses. It feels like just yesterday we had a blank sunspot minimum run for weeks on end. Waking back up now, with the largest spot just now entering the Earth-facing half. Otherwise, we're keeping an eye on the plasma filaments and watching for eruptions. The solar wind is weakening back from the moderate stream we've seen the last couple of days, back to ambient speed this morning. U.S. climate report for February is out and everyone knew this was coming. What even this map can't show, however, is the depth of the cold wave that shattered uncountable numbers of cold and snow records. Here it's smoothed over the month average, but it was a cold one. Up next, we're heading into space twice. First, we're covering the most distant cosmic jet ever observed. They say it is 13 billion light years away and belongs to a radio loud quasar. If we presume they have their distance markers correct, it is yet another challenge to the Big Bang timeline as the quasars, proto-clusters, and supermassive galaxies at this era of the cosmos shouldn't have come together just yet. Next, we're heading over to the Nova Centauri event in our own galaxy, a recurring Nova event rather than the destruction of a star, and they are finding that all analysis years later supports the notion it's still angry, still hasn't settled down. Up next, we're going to add two new authors to the solar climate forcing realm, and they do so at the small scale. Where the macro global correlations are now painstakingly being shown to remain robust at smaller scales, what's best about these sunspot studies is whereas decades ago they would try to explain the correlation mechanism with solar irradiance alone, today climate science recognizes there's more on the particle and field side than they did before. Our top two stories this morning come out of Russia, and the first looks at the magnetic field shielding effect on rats, which simulates what happens when Earth's magnetic field reaches minimum state in the excursion. The rats were unable to properly perform trained tasks, and they appeared to have a major increase in pain sensitivity within one week. The rats did adapt a bit in week two, but their electro-stim studies show that our cognition may not be all that's at risk when we reach geomagnetic minimum in the ongoing excursion. And of course, the Heinrich events, magnetic excursions, minor to moderate extinction level events, and major volcanoes all come into play with these cyclical events. Today, we focus on the Lake Mungo event and a massive deposition recorded in that period in the Los in England. Lake Mungo event was one of the weaker ones, with this adding only a few megafaunal extinctions from the Europe and Asia region, and that massive human migration event in Africa. But here, we're adding the lowest deposition in England, and it's right on time. We greatly appreciate your support. We've gone over all those aspects of the ongoing cycle and the past ones. You can support your journey of discovery at suspiciousobservers.org or at the playlist on our channel homepage. The best place to support us right now is observerranch.com, where we hope to see you someday in the not-so-distant future. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.